Well, hello there, and welcome to another video. Today, we will be making a functional UI of a food delivery app. This video is going to be divided in two parts. In the first one, we'll make the UI for both the screens, and we'll implement some functionality using the block architectural pattern. And in the second part, I will implement the drag and drop functionality since that video can also act as a standalone video on that specific topic. So let me show you the app that you're going to have by the end of the video. So here we have a simple UI. At the top, we have a menu icon and a little container that pulls the amount of items present inside of the cart. And then we have the title. Then below it, we have a search bar. And then we have these categories which can be scrolled horizontally. After that, we have all the items that we can deliver. So when you click on any one of those, a little snack bar indicates that the respective item has been added to the cart. And then the value inside of the container updates itself. Similarly, I can add even more products. So now I'm going to click on that, which takes us to another screen. And here at the top, we have a back arrow and a delete button. And then again, just below it, we have a title and the whole product list begins. And notice how all the products that we tapped on multiple times aren't enlisted again and again. Instead, we simply increase their quantity. And then we have the grand total over here. And now let me show you the coolest feature that I implemented in this UI, which is drag to delete. So if I hold an item for long enough, it becomes draggable and I can drag this little ghost of our item. Now, as I drag it to the delete icon, the item becomes red. And then as I leave it, it is deleted. All right, first of all, I will create a model for all our data. So I'll create a folder named model and instead of it, I'm going to create a file called foodItem.dart. Now, what does it mean to be a food item? So I'll create a class food item and our food item will have an ID, a title, a hotel which is preparing it, a price and an image URL and the quantity, which means the amount of quantity that the user requires for a specific food item. So uh, instead of the class food item, I will write int ID string title string hotel double price string image url and int quantity then i will create a constructor and i will initialize all of them like this but i'm going to leave this last entry which is quantity and i will initialize it myself so i will write this dot quantity equals one so what we are doing here is essentially we are initializing it by ourselves which means that quantity for every single food item will be one initially then we are also going to give our user the liberty to increase the quantity and decrease the quantity. So I'll write void increment quantity and instead of it, I'm going to write this dot quantity equals this dot quantity plus one. And then similarly, just below it, I'll write void decrement quantity, this dot quantity equal this dot quantity. Then I'll write, I'll again create a class called food item list and it's going to have one single member variable. It's going to be list food item food items then I will initialize it like this then I will simply import some data just like that so here you can see that we simply have a variable called food item list which is of type food item list and it's initialized over here and it takes a list of food items so I've written food items and then we have simply passed various different entries for all our food items okay that's it for our model class now before jumping into making the UI I will first create a block and a provider. And remember, to implement the block pattern, we will be using dependencies like block pattern and rx start. Now, it all may seem a little overwhelming, but don't worry, it's going to be really easy. So, first, I'll come inside of the pubspec.yaml file and I will write block pattern and rx start and I will sync it. Great, now it's time to create a block. Now, creating a block is a bit different than it used to be when we did not use any dependency. So let's see how to create a block. First, I will go to pub.dev and in here I'll search for block pattern. Now we get these two libraries, flutter block and block pattern. Both help us in implementing block architectural pattern in an easier manner. I haven't used flutter block, therefore I could not give an opinion on that, at least not yet. But this block pattern library is really great. So I'll click on it and I'll scroll down to this heading called using streams and reactive programming and we'll just copy some more code. But before that, let me explain the implementation. So in a block pattern, we have a block class and a main class which contains the UI. So the block is responsible for implementing and manipulating the business logic and the output of that business logic is added to the streams using the sync component. 
To know more about streams and sync, I would suggest to click on that card. So the way you create a block using this dependency is by extending a class called block base. And then we create a controller and then we use that controller to get our stream and our sync. Then we simply make changes to our stream by targeting the sync and adding some values to it. Now while implementing this, a widget called block provider would become our root widget and it takes a list of blocks and this is where we specify the block classes that we previously defined. Also you can access the block anywhere in your code just by writing this single line of code. And then to fetch everything from the stream, we use a widget called stream builder. All right, so let's start creating a block. First, I'll create a folder named block. And inside of it, I will create a file named cartlist block dot dart. So instead of this file, we'll create a stream which manages a list of food items. So we'll come over to the docs and I'll just copy this block class that you see over here. And I will paste it over here. Now I will rename the class name to cartlist block. And I will also rename the empty constructor. Now I'll rename the counter controller to list controller and this seeded method is nothing but a way for providing a default starting value for our stream so that our stream is not null in the very beginning. So in this case it is set to zero since the stream which is maintained is of type integer but we need to make a stream that manages a list of food items therefore I will replace this int with a list of food item and I will import the necessary file. Now we have an error inside of the seeded method since zero is not a list type value. So inside of the seeded method, I will pass an empty list just like that. Moving on, we have an out controller stream. So I will rename it to list stream and I will replace the counter controller. And I will change the name of the sync to list sync. And I will replace the list controller here as well. And I will also replace the counter controller here inside of the dispose method as well so i'll replace the counter controller with list controller now here's where we define our methods or action or business logic so by default they have this increment method but we're going to remove this and we're going to create two methods one for adding a food item to the list and another for removing a food item from the list of food items so i'll write add to list and it will receive a food item and then i will write list sync dot add food item but we have an error that's because we need a list of food items to be fed into the sink since we are managing a list of food items so what i'm going to do is we will add this food item to our list of food items and then we will get the updated list back to this function so that it can be added to our stream and to do that i'm going to create a provider class so instead of the same folder i will create a file and name it provider.dart now instead of this file i will create a class named cart provider and i will create a list of food item named food items and initialize it to this which means an empty list and i will also import the necessary libraries next i will create a function of type list food item and i will name it add to list this function also receives a food item and then we will add the food item that we received to the list that we made and then we will return the newly updated list. Great. Now I will do the same thing for removing an item from the list. So we'll create a function of type list food item and I will uh, name it remove from list and it will also receive a food item. And then here I will write food items dot remove food item. Then I simply return the food items list. Now I will come back to the block class and over here I will initialize the cart provider class so I will write cart provider provider equals cart provider. Then instead of the add to list function, I will write list sync dot add provider dot add to list. And then we will pass this food item as an argument. Great. Now I will create another function called remove from list and it also takes a food item. And then I will write list sync dot add provider dot remove from list food item. Great, so we have our block, provider, and our model. It's time to start working on the UI. So instead of the main dot art, I will make the block provider widget as the root widget. So I'll remove the material app from here, and I will write block provider. Then it takes a list of block. So I will write block i returns cart list block. 
and then I will import the necessary class. After that, I will paste the material app as a child for our block provider and it will take a title, a home and I will pass the home widget. And I will also set the debug show check mode banner to false. Before moving any further, let me explain why we are not using th this in a regular manner or why aren't we implementing the block pattern like we implemented earlier in the previous two videos. Well, if you look at the UI, the stream builder which listens to the stream is present inside of a list view. And the way list view works is it destroys all the widgets that are not in the view at, a, at any given moment. So for example, right now the widgets that you see are built and the widgets below it aren't even rendered yet. But as you scroll, they slowly come into existence. But by this point, the ones that are not in the view anymore are destroyed. Now let me show you what would have happened if you would have used the block pattern in a regular manner. Okay, so here I have an app that uses stream controller to get the stream. And I have implemented the block pattern in the way that I showed you in earlier videos. Now I will scroll down and everything seems fine but when I will scroll up, we have a big error. And if you check the log, it says that bad state, the stream is already being listened to. Which means that whenever this widget is rebuilt after getting destroyed, the stream is listened to once more, which creates a problem. Now, I'll also try to use streamcontroller.broadcast, which prevented this bad state error in the past. And then I will hot restart the app. Now, I will add one or two items in the car. And then I'll scroll till the very bottom. Once again, the list view does its thing and when you scroll up, the stream loses its current value and it is set to the default value of 0. Although this problem could have been solved if we would have just prevented this top title from scrolling, but what if you wanted it to scroll? In fact, I wanted it to scroll and thus we are working with this library. Now I will create a stateless widget named home and instead of the build method, I'll return scaffold which takes body, instead of the body I'll write safe area, child, container and then the container would take a list view as a child. Then if you look at the completed version of the UI, you can see that we have this first half, I'm just calling this, this portion first half and then the portion below it is the, uh, is the portion which is built using a for loop. Then I'll create a stateless widget named first half and instead of the build method, I'm going to write padding and give it a padding and then I'll write edge insets dot from ltrb 35 comma 25 and from right and from the bottom I'm just going to keep the padding 0. Then this padding will take the column as a child then I'll write children and the first thing that I'm going to write over here is a custom app bar so I'll just write custom app bar and now I will move on to this custom app bar. So custom app bar is nothing but a stateless widget and then I'll return container set its margin to 15 from the bottom then I'll write child row main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space between then I'll write children icon icons dot menu although this menu is not going to work then I will write container margin edge insets dot only write 30 child text and instead of the child I'm simply going to write 0 for now then I'll write padding edge insets dot all 15 and then in the decoration, I'm going to write box decoration, color, colors dot yellow 800, and I'm going to give, I'm going to set the border radius to border radius dot circular 50. Now I'm going to execute the flutter run command to see how everything looks so far. Okay, so at the top you can see that we have a custom app bar, and at the top right corner we have that cart icon that I talked about. Now the thing about this cart item is that it's clickable. So what I'm going to do with this is I will just wrap this container with a with a new widget and I will write just a detector on tap and I'm just going to leave the on tap empty for now. All right, so now we have made it tappable as well. Now coming back to the first half widget, I'm going to write a size box of height 30. You could also use a spacer widget to give uneven distances. I just decided to go with a size box. So I, write, so I will write size box height 30 and then I'm going to create a member function called title. Then I'll create a size box of height 30 after that as well. So let's see what happens or what goes inside of the title. So this title is nothing but a widget. So I'll write widget title 
and it will have to return a widget as well. So I'll write return row. Then I will set its main axis alignment to main axis alignment dot star. And then I'll write children. And so to the children, the first children is going to be a size box of width 45. Then I'll write column cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot start. Then I will pass in children. So the first children is going to be a text food. Then I'll write style text style and I will set its font weight to W700 and font size to 30. Similarly, just below it, I'm going to write text delivery style text style and I'm going to set its font weight to W200 and set its font size to 30 again. Okay, let's hot reload this and see how it looks. All right, it looks good. So after the second size box, I'm going to write search bar. So the search bar would contain a text field where user can type something. It's just going to be a non-functional input field. So I'll write widget search bar. This also returns a row and I'll write main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot space between children icon icons dot search and I'm going to set its color to colors dot black 45. Then I'll create a size box of width 20. Then I'll write expanded child text field. Then I'll write decoration input decoration and I'll give hint text search content padding edge insets dot symmetric vertical 10. Then I'll write hint style, text style, color, colors dot black 87 to give some color to our hint. Okay, so that's it for our search bar. Now let's start working on the categories. So I'll come back to the first half digit and I'm going to write size box, height 45, and just below it, I'm going to create a member function called categories. Then I will write widget categories and I will return a container, set its height to 185, child to list view. Then I'm going to create a widget called list view and this list view is scrollable in horizontal direction. So I'll write scroll direction axis dot horizontal. Then I will write children. Now I'm going to create a custom widget for all these items present inside of the categories list view. So I'll write category list item and it's going to have a category icon. So I'll write icons dot bug report. Then it's going to have a category name. So for now it would be burgers. Then I will write availability 12. And then every category item would have two states. Either it is selected or it is not selected. So I'll write selected true. So let's see how it looks. In fact, I'm going to copy this, paste it over here, and I will write selected false for this one. So below everything, I'm going to create a stateless widget called category list item. Then I'm going to create four member variables. So I'm going to write final icon data category icon final string category name final int availability and final bool selected then i'm going to initialize them inside of the constructor and i'm also going to mark them as required okay so let's see how to make this so instead of the build method i'm going to return a container and i'm going to write margin edge insets dot only write 20 then i'm going to give a padding from ltrb and i'm going to write 10 10 10 20 then I'm going to write decoration, box decoration, border radius, border radius dot circular, color. Now this color for any list item would change based on its state. So if it is selected, it is yellow. If it is not selected, then it is white. So I'm going to write color selected question mark color 0xff feb324, which is the yellow shade that, that we want. And then we have colon colors dot white, which means that for any list item, if the selected is marked as true, then the color is yellow and if it is marked as false, then the color is white. Then I'll write border, border dot all. Then the border is also based on this, this state. So I'll write color selected question mark colors dot transparent else colon colors dot gray 200 width and I will set its width to 1.5 and I'm also going to give it some light box shadow. So I'll write box shadow. And this box shadow argument takes a list of box shadows. So I'll write box shadow color colors dot gray 100 and I'll set its blur radius to 15 and give it an offset um, offset 15 comma 0. And I will also set its spread radius to 5. Then this container would take a column as a child. So I'll write child column main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space around. Then I'll write children container 
I'll set its padding to 20. Decoration, box decoration, color, colors dot white. And I'm going to give it a border radius of 50. And I'm going to write border, border dot all, color, selected, question mark, colors dot transparent, else colors dot gray. Then I'm going to write width 1.5. So even the border of the inner container is dependent on the selected state. Then I'm going to write child icon, category icon, color, colors dot black, and I'm going to set its size to 30. Then I'll write size box, height 10, text, category name, style, text style, font weight, font weight dot W700, and I'm going to set its color to colors dot black and set its font size to 15. Okay, so now that we have this circle done, we have the text done, now we need that little line over here. So I'll write container, margin, as in set start from left to right back, 0, 6, 0, 10. This is going to be the specific margin. It's going to be exact. And then I'll give it a width of 1.5 and a height of 15. And I'm going to set its color to colors.black26. Then I will write text, availability dot two strings since availability is an integer then i'll write style text style font weight font weight dot w600 and color to colors dot black all right so now let's see it so i'm going to hot reload it once again and there we go the first one is yellowish while the other one is not yellowish so what i'll do now is i'll just paste in some data for all the false category list items so you can see that everything's same it's just the entries which are different for example the first one is category name burgers second one is pizza third one is roll fourth one is something else and fifth one is something else all right so that completes our first half now i'm going to return back to the home widget and below first half i'm going to write sized box of height 45. okay so after the sized box i'm going to return an item container because all these items that you see are nothing but an item container widget so I'm going to return that and I'm going to return them by looping through the list that we previously created. So I'm going to write for food item in food item list dot food items. So this will loop through every food item present inside of the food item list. And then I'm going to return an item container and I'm going to pass this food item to the item container. Okay, now just below this, I'm going to create a stateless widget called item container. And I'm going to initialize the food item. First, I'm going to create a uh, variable called final food item food item. And then I'm going to initialize it inside of the constructor and mark it as required. Then inside of the build function, I'm going to write just a detector. Since we want some action to be carried out whenever an item is tapped. So I'm going to write just a detector on tap and I'm going to leave the on tap empty. Then inside of the child, I'm going to write items. And this item would take a hotel, item name, item price, item URL and left align. Now what is that left align? I'm going to explain later. So I'm going to first write instead of the items, I'm going to write hotel, food item dot hotel. Instead of the item name, I will pass food item dot title, then item price, food item dot price, image URL, food item dot image URL. Now if you look at the finished version, you can see that items are aligned alternatively. So I'm going to write left aligned food item dot ID percent two equal equal zero question mark true colon false. So we have basically made a left aligned argument and we compare it with the food items ID. Remember every food item has an ID and we divide that by two in order to find even and odd numbers. So if food item dot ID percent two equal equal to zero, which means that given food ID is an even ID or is an even value then we set the left align to true otherwise we set the left align to false which means that all the even element would be left aligned and all the odd elements would be right aligned so let's see how to do that all right so i'm going to create a stateless widget called items i'm going to create a constructor and i'm also going to create several member variables so i'll write final bool left aligned final string image url final string item name final double item price and final string hotel then instead of the constructor i will write at required this dot left line this dot image url this dot item name this dot item price and this dot hotel and i'll mark all the others as required as well then instead of the build method i will first create a variable called double container padding equal 45 then i will create another variable called double 
contain a border radius equal to 10. Then I will return a column children and the first child would be a container. Then I will write padding edge insets dot only left left align question mark 0 colon container padding and then I will write right left align question mark container padding colon 0. Then I am going to pass column as a child for our container and then children then I'm going to write container it's gonna have a width double dot infinity height of 200 and then I'm going to give some box decoration so I'll write decoration box decoration border radius border radius dot circular 10 then I'll write child clip our rect border radius border radius dot horizontal left now again we want variable border radius based on the alignment of our item so I'll write left left aligned question mark radius dot circular 0 else radius dot circular container border radius similarly I'll write right left align question mark radius dot circular container border radius else radius dot circular 0 again we are targeting the border radius of horizontal direction and if our element is left aligned which means left aligned is true then from the left the border radius would be 0 and for the right border radius would be equal to container border radius and if left aligned is false which means our item is right aligned so we'll give it some border radius from the left and we have passed zero as border radius from the right all right now for our triple rect i'm going to pass a child image dot network image url fit box fit dot fill okay that's that now i'm going to come out of this container and i'm going to write the second child of our column so i'll write sized box height 20 then after the size box i'm going to write container padding agent sets dot only left left align question mark 20 colon 0 right left align question mark 0 colon 20 so again this is the same thing so first let me run this and show it to you you can see that we have all these items being rendered alternatively so now coming back to our code I'm going to pass in a column as a child for our container and then this column would have a cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot start then I'm going to write children row children expanded and instead of the expanded I will write child text item name style text style font weight font weight dot w700 and font size of 80 then I'll write text and in this string I'm going to write slash dollar dollar item price style text style font weight font weight dot w700 and font size 18 okay so this is done then the second children of this column would again be a size box of height 10 then i'll create an align widget i'll write align alignment alignment dot center left then i'll pass in a rich text as a child then i'll write text text span style text style and I'll give it some text style. So I'll write color, colors to black 45 and font size 15. Then for the children, I'll write text span, text by, and I'll give an extra space over here. Then I'll write text span, text, URL, style, text style, font weight, font weight dot W700. Okay, and then at the very end, after the align widget, I'm going to write size box, height, container padding. So that's it. So let's reload this once again and there we go you can see that we now have the complete ui okay so the static ui is complete now we need to make it dynamic so how to do that well the first thing that i'm going to implement is i'm going to pass in some action to carry out whenever the these items are tapped so i'll come inside of the item container i'll come to this just detector and instead of an on tap i will write add to cart and i will add the food item now what is this food item well, this food item is the object of the class food item that we are currently receiving from the for loop. So I'll write add to cart food item and then I'll create a function called add to cart food item food item. And now all we have to do is add this food item to our list. First, we need to get our hand on the block. So I'll write final cart list block block equal block provider dot get block. And I can also write the type of block that we are receiving so it's cart list block so this this is a handy method of obtaining the block anywhere anytime in your code so instead of the add to cart now i can write block dot add to list food item 
now if you will tap on any of the food item that food item would be added to our list but we need some ui changes to indicate that we have added it so i'm going to use a snack bar so just below the add to card i will write final snack bar equals snack bar and then in the content i'll write text dollar food item dot title is added to the cart then i'll write duration duration milliseconds 550 now how to show a snack bar so i'll write scaffold dot off context dot show snack bar and i'm going to pass this snack bar variable okay now let's test it out so i'm going to reload the app and i'm going to tap on it and there we go we are now able to add things to our cart but we need to make changes to this card widget so that it updates as we add something to our list. Now how to do that? Well for that I'm going to scroll down to custom app bar and uh, I'm going to cut this gesture detector entirely. And we're gonna have to make use of stream builder. Now I know in my previous videos I said stream builder cannot be used inside of stateless widget. Turns out I was wrong. Stream builder can be used and is going to be used. So I'm going to write stream builder stream block dot list stream but hey where's the block so at the top of the widget build i'll write final cart list block equal block provider dot get block cart list block this is the same line of code that i talked about earlier so now the error goes away and then i'm going to write builder context for my snapshot and then uh, remember every single snapshot in fact every single snapshot dot data that we're going to receive is of type list so we're going to create a variable called list food item food items equals snapshot dot data and as a precautionary measure i'm going to write int length equals to food items not equal to now question mark food items dot length else zero so if the food items variable is not equal to null which means that snapshot is not null then we set the length variable to the length of the food items list otherwise we set it to zero then i'm going to write return build gesture detector and i'll pass in a length i'll pass in the context and i'll pass in the food items list and just below here i'll write gesture detector build gesture detector and i'll receive all the parsed arguments so i'm going to write int length build context context list food item food items and now i'm going to paste our gesture detector over here so i'll write return and i'll paste it all okay so instead of the text widget i'm going to write length dot to string and that's it now if you hot restart it again and click on one of those you can see that uh, the the cart actually increases the number actually increases and even if you scroll down and you tap on something and then you come back the number does increases and everything works just as it's supposed to be now we need the user to be able to actually see that what is present in his cart and manipulate the cart so the only place which seems suitable is by tapping on that number so instead of the gesture detector i'm going to write if length is greater than zero navigator dot push context comma material page route builder context cart else return so if the length is greater than zero which means that the cart does has something then we allow the user to be able to move to the cart otherwise there would be no action when the user taps on it okay so now let's work on our cart so just over here i'm going to create a file called cart.dart now inside of the cart.dart i'm going to import material.dart and i'm also going to import cupertino.dart and then i'll create a stateless widget called cart and inside of its build method i'm going to repeat the same line of code to get the block then i'll write list food item food items and the root of our widget tree in this file would be stream builder so i'll write return stream builder stream block dot list stream builder context comma snapshot if snapshot dot data is not null food items equals snapshot dot data return scaffold body safe area and instead of the safe area i'll write child card body food items so first i'm going to create a stateless widget called card body and it will receive the food items that is passed so i'll write final list food item food items and then this card body will receive the food items list okay now instead of the build method i will write return container padding agent sets dot from ltrb 35 40 25 0 then i'll write child column children and over here the first child would again be a custom app bar now i will create a stateless widget name it custom app bar then i'll write final cart list block block 
just repeat the same line of code to get the block. Then inside of the build method, I'll return a row main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot space between children, and the first children would be padding. So I'll write padding, padding, const agent sets dot all 5.0, child gesture detector, child icon, and then I'm going to write Cupertino icons dot pack, and I'll write size 30, and on tap navigator dot pop context. So this is basically responsible for returning the user to the main screen once it's clicked. Then just below it, I'll write gesture detector, padding, agent sets dot all 5.0, child icon, Cupertino icons dot delete, and I'm going to set its size to 35. And then for our gesture detector, I'm simply going to leave this on tap empty. Okay, so that's it for our custom app bar. Now I'm going to write title and it will be a member function. So just over here, I'm going to write widget title, return padding, and then I'm going to write padding, agent sets dot symmetric vertical 35. So this will give 35 padding from top and from the bottom. And then I'm going to write child row, main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot start, children, column, cross axis alignment, cross axis alignment dot start, children, and then I'm going to write text my style text style with a font weight of W700 and set its font size to 35. Then below it I'll write text order, set its font weight to W300 and font size to 35. So that's it for our title. Then I'm going to give an expanded widget, so I'll write expanded flex1 child food items dot length greater than zero question mark food item list colon no item container. So if our food items contain something then we show a full item list otherwise we show a no item container so first let's create a no item container now no item container is nothing but a container so i'll write container no item container and it returns a container back so i'll write child center child text and the text would simply be no more items left in the cart and then i'll write style text style give it a font weight of w600 and set its color to colors dot gray 500 then i'll write font size 20 Great, so now let's see what happens inside of the food item list. So I'll write list view, food item list, return list view dot builder, item count, food items dot length. So we are basically passing the length of our food items list to item count. And then inside of the item builder, I'll write context, comma index, return cart list item. Then this cart list item would receive a single food item from the list of food items. So I'll write food item, food items index. So let's see what happens inside of the cart list item. Now I'll create a stateless widget called cart list item. I'll create a single food item by writing final food item, food items, cart list item. Then I'll initialize it inside of the constructor. So I'll write cart list item at required this dot food item. And inside of the build method, I will simply return a container and I will set its margin to 25 from the bottom. And I'll write child item content and I will pass in this food item just like this. Now I'll create a stateless widget called item content. Okay, so instead of the item content, I'll cre again create a final food item and I'll write at required this dot food item instead of the constructor. Now here's where the UI for our list item begins. So instead of the build method, I'll write return container child row. I'll set its cross axis alignment to cross axis alignment dot center and main axis alignment to main axis alignment dot space between. Then I'll write children, clip our rect, border radius, border radius dot circular five, and I'll give it a child image dot network, which takes food item dot image URL, fit box fit dot fit height, and I'll give it a height of 55 and width of 80. Then I'll give a rich text widget and I'll write text, text spam, style, text style, and I'll set its font size to 16, color to colors dot black, and font weight to W700. Then I'll pass in a children, and I'll write text span text food item dot quantity dot two string, text span text x, and text span text food item dot title. Then over here I'll write text dollar food item dot quantity into food item dot price, style text style color colors dot gray 500 and font weight font weight dot w400 now let's hot restart it once again and there we go
but there are several problems with this approach. So for example, go back to main screen and I'm going to tap on the same item again and again and then and let's go back to cart and see what happens. There are multiple amount of same item. We don't want that to happen. We want to group them together and we simply want to increase the amount of quantity. So to do that, we need to make changes in our add function, which means that we need to make changes in the way we are adding items to our list. So for that, we'll go back to cartlist block dot art and I will come inside the add to list method. So over here, the only thing that we are doing right now is we are saying food items dot add and we are returning the food item, but we need to do much more. So what we'll do is whenever add to list method is triggered. So which means that whenever a new item is selected, we'll compare the ID of that item to all the items that are already present inside of the list. If the ID matches, then we increase the quantity of the respective food item or else we simply add it to our cart. Now let's see how to do that. So instead of the add to list, I'll simply remove this line of code and I'll create a variable bool is present equal false. Then we want everything to happen if food items dot length is greater than zero, which means there's something present in our list to be compared with. So I'll write if food items dot length is greater than zero. And inside of the else part for this if, I'll simply write food items dot add food item, which means that if the list is already empty, therefore there's nothing to compare the current item with. So I'll simply add it to the full list. Now, instead of the if method, I'll write a for loop and I'll write int i equals zero, i less than food items dot length i plus plus. Then instead of the for loop, I'll write if food items i dot id equal equal food item dot id. Then instead of the food item ID, I'll write increase item quantity food item. For example, if beach barbecue burger is already present inside of the list, then we don't want to add it again. We rather want to increase its quantity. So that's why I wrote increase item quantity food item. And then I'll mark the is present equal to true. And then I'll write break. Then instead of the else part, I'll simply write is, is present equals false. Now after the for loop, I'll check the value of is present. So I'll write if not is present, which means that if the current food item is not present in the list, so we add that to our list. So I'll say food items dot add food item. And the else part of our if is already covered. We only need to make the increase item quantity. So at the very bottom of this file, I'll write void increase item quantity, receive the food item, and then it returns food item dot increment quantity. Remember this increment quantity is a method that we created at the very starting of the video while making the model. And I'm also going to create a decrease item quantity, which we are going to need eventually. So I'll write void decrease item quantity, food item, food item, and it returns food item dot decrement quantity. Now we are not going to be adding the functionality of deletion in this video. It's all going to be done in the second video. So that's it. The addition should work now. Now I'll hot restart the app again and I'll click on this item again and again. Now I'll go back to cart and there we go. Instead of being listed individually, they are all grouped together now. And you can see that even the prices that you see at the very right is calculated correctly. Okay, now let's work on the bottom navigation bar. So I'll come at the very top of this cart.dart and instead of the scaffold, I'll write bottom navigation bar, bottom bar, and this also takes the list of food items. So I'll create a state list widget bottom bar and I'll write final list food items and I will initialize it over here. Notice that we haven't used any curly braces. That's because I'm passing the food items value directly rather than passing it in the form of a named argument. So instead of the build method, I'll write return container margin agencies dot only and I'm going to give a margin from left of 35 and from bottom of 25. Then I'll write child column main exercise main exercise dot min uh, and then I'll write children total amount food items then I'll create a member function total amount and it takes the food items so so I'll write widget total amount and it takes the list of food item food items then it returns a container margin agent sets dot only write 10 padding agent sets dot all 25 children row main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot space between children, text, total, style. I'll give it a style and I'll write text style font size 25 and I'll set its font weight to W300. 
then I'll write text dollar dollar return total amount food items now what is this return total amount it's simply going to be a function so over here I'll write string return total amount it, this also takes a list of food items then I'll write double total amount equal equal 0, 0.0 then I'll loop through the food items list that we are receiving so I'll write for int i equals 0 I'll extend food items dot length i plus plus and then total amount equal to total amount plus food items i dot price multiplied by food items i dot quantity so over here we are simply looking into our cart list and we are multiplying the price with the quantity of the food items so for example if there are four beach barbecue burgers so we are multiplying four with the price of beach barbecue burgers then i'll simply return total amount dot two string as fixed two since it's a double value therefore we wish to limit the value up to two decimal places then i'll write style text style font weight font weight dot w700 and font size to 28 okay so the total amount is done now i'll hot restart the app and there we go now i want to have like a little divider here so i'll write divider height one color colors dot gray then i'll write persons and this will also be a member function so just below it i'll write container persons return container margin agent sets dot only write 10 padding agent sets dot symmetric vertical 30 then i'll write child row main access alignment main access alignment dot space between children and the first children would be a text so i'll write text persons style text style I'll set its font size to 14 and font weight to W700. Then I'll write custom person widget. Now this is a custom widget which we'll make in order to replicate this little portion that you see in the final version of the UI. So just over here, I'll create a stateful widget called custom person widget. And in here, I'll create a variable called int number of persons equal one and double button width equal to 30. Honestly, I saw this on the design and that's why I want to replicate it but I didn't really found much use of it on the total amount therefore it's not going to be manipulating the total amount it's just going to be there for the sake of replicating the UI so instead of the build method I'll write return container margin as it sets dot only write 25 decoration I'll write box decoration border border dot all color give it a color and then width 2 then I'll write border radius, border radius dot circular, 10. Then I'll write padding, agent sets dot symmetric, vertical 5. Then I'll write width, then I'll set its width to 120, child, row, main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot space evenly, children. Now over here, I'll create a size box of width underscore button width, height underscore button width. Then I'll write flat button. And instead of the child, I'll write text dash style text style font weight font weight dot w600 font size 20. Then instead of the on press method, I'll write set state if number of person is greater than one, number of persons minus minus. So this button is basically responsible for decreasing the number of persons. Now we want to show the current value of number of persons. I'll create a text widget which takes in a number of person dot to string. And then I'll give it some style. So I'll set its font weight to W600 and font size to 20. Now I'll copy this size box and I'll paste it over here. And I'll simply change the set state from number of persons to plus plus and change this dash to plus. All right. Now I'll come back to the build method of bottom bar widget and uh, I'll create another variable called next button bar that you see here in the final widget. So I'll create a function called container next button bar and it returns a container and I'll set its margin to 25 from the right and I'll give it a padding of 25 then I'll write decoration color box decoration color color 0x ff feb324 then I'll write border radius border radius dot circular 15 then I'll write child row main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space between children and it takes two children first one is a text 50-25 min style text style font weight dot w800 font size 14 then i'll write text next style text style font weight font weight dot w900 
Now I'm going to hot restart the app and there you go. We have completed the UI portion and we have even completed the functionality portion. The only thing that is left is drag and drop, which I'm going to show you in the next video. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and make sure to click on the next video in order to implement that cool functionality and complete your UI by actually implementing the delete functionality. The code for the UI is present in the description below and make sure to hit the like button if you like the video and comment and of course share it to the people you know, share it to the people who you think would be interested in this content. Also if you're new then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Alright then, see you next time.